Let me ask you about something. Do you know a friend of mine was forbidden to see your movies at one point by his rather straight-laced parents? Yes. And I know you know what time, point that is. Now, younger viewers knowing, watching this may not know what we're talking about and probably would find it inconceivable to think that there was a time, those growing up now, when an actress who had a child out of wedlock was practically burned at the stake uh, in the public presses and so on in this country. Um, yes. Does it seem incredible to you that there, that there was such a time? Well, I passed through it, and I remember it very well. Yeah. But young uh, newspaper people who go through the files so that they know their homework and mm -hmm. know what questions to ask me so they don't start to ask, where was I born? They have <laughs> to know a little bit about that. Do you have any hobbies? They are very surprised. They can't understand why it was such a shock and why I was treated to such an extent. Of, uh, I was a danger for American womanhood. I was, a, I was such a corruption for everybody. I know uh, my voice was taken off all the radio programs that asked for money, you know, charity, uh, yeah. Salvation Army, whatever. Uh, even my voice over the radio was supposed to be dangerous. And you were denounced from pulpits in the yes, classic sense. It was practically uh, from everywhere. something out of Hawthorne. Uh, it, 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 I was surprised. I didn't think that I had do, done anything courageous that, that people should admire me for it. But I didn't understand that uh, the hatred oh, became so enormously big mm -hmm. for a thing that, after all, it was my private life. They had no idea what I had gone through earlier, during, and after uh, my decision to have a child. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, I, I felt naturally very hurt by it. But it took 25 years, and uh, then I was forgiven. But it took that mm -hmm. long. <laughs> astounding to think of. Uh, they say that these things go in cycles, so it, it, we, maybe it's wrong to say we're past that time. It may merely be in abeyance and I suppose could come again. But when they said yeah. conservative women's organizations attacked you, I found that in, uh, as a young journalist going through files. Uh, well, what did they actually do? Uh, uh, try to boycott your films? Or, yes, of or? course. Yes, and try to prevent me from ever coming back to America again, mm -hmm. because my presence here would have been dangerous. When your uh, uh, biography comes out, which I know is, is forthcoming, uh, by the way, I feel in no danger sitting this close to you. Um, uh, will you go into that in some detail? It was no bed of roses, as they say, what you went through there. It isn't as if you were off having a, the greatest time of your life, I gather, from what... Uh, as it was my most difficult time in life, of course, part of the book, which is way off, mm. Uh, it's my not coming out. Is ready right it may now, not come out for a very long time, <laughs> but um, I felt that everybody's writing books, and it's kind of pretentious that you think that everybody is so interested in reading your life. That I've said no for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to tell any more. I give interviews and I talk to you, and that's about enough. People don't have to know anything more about the person. Mm -hmm. But then my son came to me about a year ago. And um, he'd heard me say no another time. And he said that, uh, I wish you would write down the facts. Tell the truth, put it on tape, give it to somebody to write if you don't want to write it yourself, but put, put down something. So one day when you are dead, people are going to write so many books about you and uh, we can't defend you because we don't know what is the truth or what mm -hmm. not is true. So that made me think once again, maybe uh, I owe it to my children to put down the truth as I saw it from my mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I forgive this, it seems like probing you too much, but um, I'm always interested, and I think uh, most people are, how people make major decisions in their lives. It baffles me how to do it. I, in that case, for example, would, would you call it a decision made through passion or uh, conscious intellect or? Uh, or Which none of decision? the above. Uh, when, when you did decide to, to go with Rossellini and, and, and leave your family and so on, w w was it, how, how do you categorize it? As something you sat down and added up the uh, arguments for and against, uh, Ben Franklin style? Uh, it was a combination of passion, mm -hmm. that I fell in love with a man that was so different from any other man that I'd ever known. And it was my boredom in Hollywood. I'd done so many good movies, and I'd had the best directors and best leading men, but 
It was the same thing how, somehow. It was always Hollywood. I couldn't get out of it. And it became an unrealistic picture. And the more I worked there, the more I wanted to break out of it and do something different. You see, I've always, as I said, I wanted to surprise people. I wanted to do something that they didn't expect me to do. And when I saw uh, Rossellini's film, Rome Open City, I said, this is it. This is such a different movie from anything I've ever seen. I want to be in a movie like that. Yeah. So I wrote him a letter, too. Another letter. <laughs> I'm great at letters. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, uh, you should probably have your stationery taken away from you. <laughs> As I remember, uh, in that letter you said to him, quite innocently, uh, I'm afraid the only Italian I know is, Te amo, is it I love you? Yes. Well, I, Perhaps if you'd known the phrase for be careful or something, uh, everything would have been different. Well, I wrote the letter <laughs> in a, I thought I was funny, you see, to write to a director and say, look, I want to leave Hollywood and at the time I was box, nof box office number one and uh, I mean I had I had everything I could possibly wish for mm -hmm. and to write to an unknown director in Italy I didn't know anything about him I only had seen that one movie but I did wait until I saw the second one because I thought maybe it's just by chance that he has done one great movie uh, maybe he'll never make another one <laughs> so I waited until I saw here in New York Paisa and then I knew it wasn't a chance because that movie was just as good. And then I wrote him, and to be funny, I said, here I am, Swedish, uh, I can speak pretty good English, uh, my German I have forgotten, in French I'm just studying, and in Italian I can only say ti amo. And ti amo, I love you, I had learned as part of the dialogue in a movie I made with Charles Boyer called Art of Triumph. Art of Triumph. I played an Italian girl, and of course we spoke English in the whole movie until the girl dies at the end, and then she just said, ti amo, ti amo. And I may put that in as a joke, you see, that is, and it was the only Italian I, I knew. I didn't even know that you could say basta. <laughs> <laughs>